Hi, my name is Liliana Cantu. I'm currently a senior at Columbia University studying computer science. And today we're gonna to be learning a little bit of Python. And so to start off, why Python? First of all, it's my favorite language. Um, but the reason why it's my favorite language is because it's widely adopted um, and commonly used for absolutely everything you can think of. So it's used for website development, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and so many other things. Another reason why it's one of my favorites is because it's a very fast growing language. So because Python is so straightforward with its um, syntax or sort of like composition of like how it's written, it's many people's first language. And as a result, it's sort of been adopted very quickly um, and a lot of people like building libraries for it so these are just some of the reasons why I absolutely love Python but yeah let's get right into it there are many ways to run Python you could download Python from the python.org website and run it through your computer through something called the terminal which we actually made a video about so make sure you check that out or the more beginner way in my opinion would be through an IDE. So an IDE um, stands for Integrated Development Environment. And so what it basically does, it's sort of a one-stop shop to all your Python needs. So some IDEs require downloading onto your computer while others can be run through the browser, meaning that as long as you have internet, you can access them without having to download anything. If you prefer to go the desktop or like the downloading onto your computer, route i personally recommend anaconda which has spider in it so anaconda is sort of like a big package with many programs you can check it out at anaconda.com and inside of there is something called spider so i've actually used spider for all the classes that i've taught at columbia in python well i didn't teach them i was teaching assistant but you know same thing uh similar thing <laughs> and um i find i really really like it um but yeah, if you prefer that instead of constantly be being connected to the internet, I think that's a better option. Um, and usually is the better option, but just so we don't have to go through the downloading instructions, we're gonna be using an online IDE. Just pro tip, if you do decide to use Anaconda, make sure that you download the graphical installer because if you download the terminal installer, it will be basically just as complicated. So um, we will be using Replit today. For this, you wanna go to the Replit website. So this is gonna be rpl.it. This is the main link Replit website. So after we do this, um, you wanna sign up. So you can either use your Google account, your GitHub account, or your Facebook account, um, or just make a username and, email a, and give an email and a password. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna be logging in. And after you make your account, you will be taken to this page. In here, you'll see that you have something called create, so feel free to like look through it a bit more, uh, but we're just gonna be doing the basics. So inside of create, you wanna click Python. So here you sort of can pick all the languages. Um, Replit has many, many languages, but in our case, we just wanna use Python. If you wanna learn another language, it's still a great tool to use. And then after I do that, this is basically saying, what do I wanna call my environment? So I'm gonna call my environment hello and then I'm gonna create it. And so in here, you'll see that you have three tabs. Um, the one on the left is called your files. The one in the middle is called your text editor, which is where all our code will be happening. And the one on the furthest right is called your console. And so this is where our things that we write will be displayed. So the first thing that we're gonna learn is something called print. And so what print is, is it just literally displays something onto the console so in this case i'm gonna do print hello world and when i run that with this run button at the top you'll see that it just displays hello world and so congratulations you just wrote your first program which is very exciting now that we sort of learned this um the next thing that we're gonna learn are variables so variables just like in math are sort of things that we use to represent something else so this case, for example, let's do x is equal to 10. And so what this means is I'm basically storing information into x. And what this allows us to do is that this gives us a lot of flexibility on how we can call things. So for example, instead of having to do print 10, which you know, would just print 10, um, I can do print x. And because x is um, assigned to 10, then it would print 10. Another 
quick example of this is y is equal to 2. And so when I do x plus y, right, this will give me 12. So this sort of brings us into our next thing. Let's learn about operations, right? So like math operations. Here, um, notice how I put like a pound sign or otherwise known as a hashtag. Um, what that basically does is that's a way to annotate things. I can do addition by using the plus sign between two things. I can do subtraction by using just the minus sign. I can use multiplication by using the asterisk sign. And then I can do division by doing a backslash. But not only can we store um, numbers into our variables, we can store all types of things. So the first type that we have already learned are called integers. And so integers are just basically whole numbers. An example of this would be say x is equal to 10. But now you may ask, wait, like life is not perfect. What if I want to store decimals? That's a great question. If we want to store a decimal number, then we can use floats. These allow us to save decimal numbers. And what that means is just basically numbers with a decimal, right? This doesn't mean like, oh, really, really small decimal numbers. This means just numbers with any decimal. So I could even do x is equal to 10.0, and that would be considered a float. Now you may ask, Ileana, what if I want to store, let's say, a phrase? Well, in that case, we have strings. So strings can store sequence of characters. Similar to what we did at the beginning when we did print hello world, here we can store sequence of characters by putting quotation marks around it. So all of them sort of have something that tells you that they're that specific type. So integers are literally just whole numbers, floats have that decimal point in them, and strings have those quotation marks around them. Additionally, if you're using replit, the colors are quite nice to sort of help you tell that. And lastly, the last type that we will be learning for this video will be lists. A list basically allows us to store a collection of things. The way that we display them is by putting two brackets and then just putting things in them. So let's say I want to put a 10. Let's say I want to put all the things that I've just went over. So I could put a 10, I could put a 10.0, and I could also put a quick hello world. And all of these, we can put them in there um, and sort of collect them into a list. So now that we like sort of have generally covered the types, I'm going to be going a bit more in depth into each of these and the cool things that each of them can do. So to start off, um, we're going to be going over integers and floats together. Let's say we have x is equal to 10 for our integers, then we have y is equal to 5. And let's say that I want to do some multiplication. So if I decide to do x times y, you will notice that this gives me 50. Um, also, let's get rid of this print statement up here just so that we don't get confused. So if I do x is equal to 10, y is equal to 5, and I decide to multiply those, then that's just going to give me 50. If I decide to do addition, that's just going to be 10 plus 5. And if I decide to do subtraction, that's just going to give me 5. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If I divide two whole integer numbers, right, so two integer types, you would expect for this to give me a two, right, of type integer, but in fact, that would be wrong. So this actually gives you a double. So when you divide two integers by the, each other, this will give you a double. And so this is important to remember for something that we're gonna be going over in a little bit, um, but just keep this in mind. So it's always important that we remember what types our things are. Now, if we do it with floats, when you're dividing two floats already, so let's say y is equal to 5.0, this is just going to remain a float, so nothing is going to change. Um, I'm going to comment this. I'm going to delete this. And so this is going to stay the same, um, but unlike when we did it with integers, if we say we add these two numbers, even though technically, you know, 10 plus 5 just gives us 15, which is a whole number, it will still show the dot zero because the two numbers that you are adding are decimal numbers. And so this is just something to keep in mind. Those are sort of the basics between integers and floats. You want to use floats when you're dealing with something that you know will have 
decimals or when like so for example when we're dealing with money we would rather use floats because of this but let's say we're dealing with number of people then in that case we want to use integers as you become more familiar with python that will become easier for you all let's say we have strings so here i have my string hello world and so we can actually also add strings um, so that looks a little bit different so let's say i'm going to save hello into my x and i'm gonna now make my y world so after that i'm gonna call something called final which basically is both strings and then we're gonna print final and so when we do this you'll notice that this will just say hello world oops let's delete this so when i print this you'll see that this says hello world and you'll notice something very particular that the hello world is just sort of smushed together the thing about like adding two strings is that spaces are like not added in right when dealing with strings you want to make sure that if you need a space you add that in there um, because it is like sensitive to that let's say we wanted to have a space so we're gonna add a space in front of world and when we print that it will give us that now you might be asking me okay that's very cool Ileana, but what if i want to say hello world times 10. Um, we're going to make another variable called let's see i'm running out of letters we're going to call it m inside of m i'm going to store a big x just for times and then let's say that inside my variable n i'm going to store a number 10 right so if i decide to do x plus y plus m oops plus m plus n so this should tell us hello world no space and let's actually put a space here so it should say hello space world space x times 10 right so x 10 but if you run this you'll see that this actually gives you an error um that says you can only concatenate strings not integers so what in the heck is concatenating right so concatenating actually is adding strings so when we did our previous example of just adding hello plus world we were concatenating hello and world you can only concatenate strings because of this this is failing because n is of type integer rather than string a quick way to fix that is by using something called type casting and basically what that means is you are converting a specific type to another type in this case i would want to convert this n that's an integer into a string and now when i run this again it works so now it says hello world times 10 because we are so friendly we can basically go back and forth um, between strings and integers as long as it makes sense right so for example let's say i wanted to make let's make this called wacky string and let's say i want to change my x variable so my variable that says hello into a number so if i try to do that um i will get an, an error because you know it just doesn't make sense like how do you expect me to change hello like python is just saying how do you expect me to change hello into an integer that just doesn't make sense this is something called typecasting and it's very helpful another thing that is very helpful is you can also check the types of things so let's say i want to find the type of n so i can just do print type of n so you will you we literally write type parentheses and then inside of those parentheses put the variable that you want to find or the thing that you want to find the type of and it will tell you this is an integer if we try out let's say y this would tell us this is a type string and so on and so forth so now that we have all those covered, we're gonna put it together and make a grocery list. So list, again, allows us to have a collection of things. And we can do this by just adding something with brackets. So we're gonna call this my list. And this is basically an empty list. Now that we have that, um, I can also make a list that actually has things. So I'm going to call this my food list. And inside of here, I'm going to put olive oil. I'm going to put pasta. 
and I'm gonna put tomatoes because I'm making some spaghetti okay um, also notice how I use the apostrophes instead of quotation marks in Python they're basically interchangeable so just a heads up now that we have that when we print my food list you'll see that this will print exactly the way that we wrote it and so there we have olive oil pasta tomatoes yay so now you might ask like what well, how can i add things to this list so we're going to be using a method called append so you can think of a method as something you call that allows you to do more things when we call my food list dot append garlic this will add garlic to my list so when we print my food again you'll notice that so when we add garlic you'll notice that that adds garlic onto our list so now that we've learned about all these four types let's make it a little bit more complicated so we are going to be making a big grocery list i'm going to call my grocery list just grocery list and first i'm gonna get an empty list right because i just want to have an empty list uh, because that's how lists start right when we make a grocery list and then i'm gonna call something item one right and my item one is just gonna be um the item that i want to get so let's say i want to do hot dog buns and let's do something called a number because this is going to tell us the number of things that I want. So I'm going to do how many hot dog buns do I want? Let's say I want five hot dog buns for my family and I. So into our grocery list, we are going to basically append. So that basically just means add five hot dog buns, right? And so in order for me to do this, I need to join these two things into a single string so that I can append the whole string. In that case, I'm going to call this final and our final is going to get our number and it's going to append a space. So this is something new and then it's going to concatenate that with our item one. So we're gonna do the string, we're gonna grab the number and we're gonna make it into a string. Then we're gonna add a space because then that would look weird. And then we're gonna add our item. So from there, I'm gonna append it to my grocery list. All right, so we're gonna append this um, sort of final item. So let's actually call this final item. And we're gonna append it onto here and after that, we want to print our grocery list so we can know how many things we have in there. So we're going to print that there. And now we have five hot dog buns in our list. So we can continue doing this with a lot of other items. So we're going to copy this whole thing. But now instead of hot dog buns, I'm going to do hot dog, just hot dogs. And so let's say I want to put two hot dogs in each hot dog bun. So I'm going to call this something different than our previous variables and I'm going to change all this and I'm going to append my final item to and at the end of that I'm going to print my grocery list. So you'll notice that two grocery lists will print. The first one will be when we added our first item and the second one will be when we added our second item. So you'll see that our first list has just 10 hot dog buns, sorry, five hot dog buns. Um, and our second one has five hot dog buns and 10 hot dogs. So yeah, that's our grocery list and you can continue adding things as you go. Um, of course, these are just very introductory ideas, uh, but they're things that you can do a lot with. Um, additionally, we'll be making another video, so a second part to this introduction to Python, um, teaching something called if statements and loops, um, which will give you a lot more flexibility on what you can do. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we post videos every other Monday, so if you would like to watch more videos like these, um, make sure you subscribe and like. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Good luck.